What's up, YouTube? My name is Eric, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, it's all about mental health, mental illness, suicide awareness, sobriety, just making sure that nobody goes it alone in life. I am diagnosed with ADHD, PTSD, GAD, and MDD. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a counselor. Um, I am a recovering addict when it comes to alcohol and cocaine. I've lost a wife and a father to suicide, and I found that it is easy and, and, and helpful to share the experiences and stuff of what we've been through in life, maybe helping somebody else out there that's struggling. One of the things that I've been hit up a lot because I do so much with social media is how to tell your parents or your therapist or somebody that you're struggling. And the power of communication of, of being open with them. It's amazing how many people will reach out to me and I'll be like, okay, so have you talked to your parents about it or have you talked to your therapist about it? And I get a response back of kinda. Well, kinda means no. <laughs> that, that's how it just registers in my book. That's how my brain works. If somebody was to tell me, well, I kinda talked to them, it means oh, you really didn't talk to them. Um, maybe you had more conversation going on in your head than what you actually had with that person. So they may have no idea exactly what it is you're struggling with. The best way I have found to ever let anybody know you're struggling, you start off just like this. I am struggling a lot right now. <laughs> and write them a letter. Writing somebody a letter is one of the most powerful things we can do because we don't lie to them. We don't embellish. And if you sit down and you really write out all of what you're going through with, you know, in life, of, of whether it's depression or the anxiety and how you're feeling, it's one of the best ways to start communication when it comes to parents or when it comes to family, when it comes to a loved one, when it comes to a doctor, so that we don't hold back, that we don't feel that we're being judged. Usually, if you're writing out a letter, do it in the comfort of your house. If you're doing it in the comfort of your house, you're going to be more open with it, and you're going to share everything that you're going through. I mean, sometimes you're going to need multiple pieces of paper to write down everything you're going through. When you're done with that, fold it all up. It doesn't even have to be neat. Just fold it up. And if you're going into your therapist, all you do is keep this, keep this in your pocket. When you go in to see your therapist, hand them the letter. Uh, your parents, uh, families, loved ones, hand them a letter and walk away even. Because... One of the things I found like with me that stopped my communication is the fear of being judged, the fear of being a burden, the fear of letting them down. Being able to write them a letter of exactly what I'm going through, the emotions I'm feeling, how I'm feeling, and what's going on with me helped others understand the struggles that I was going through. And I didn't have to be there when they read it. That was the best part is I, I was always afraid of those looks that you get of, of feeling being judged or feeling that you're letting them down. Hand them the letter, walk the fuck away, go into your room, go wherever. You don't have to be around them when they read it, which is the best part, but it helps open up the communication. And, and it doesn't work 100% of the time. I think it does a lot better job, though, than kind of telling somebody what you're going through. Same with your therapist. I mean, if you hand this to your therapist and sit back, even let your therapist know, hey, I'm going through a lot of anxiety right now. It's very hard for me to open up with you. Here's what I'm struggling with. It allows you to get the help that you need. I think a lot of the times when we say, you know, we're not getting help through therapy is because we're not being open and honest with what we're going through and truly asking for help. I mean, if, if you went to the extent that you handed a therapist a letter and, and you've asked for help and, and you started the trial and error and it's not working, sometimes you do need to find another therapist. But we have to give every therapist, I feel, the benefit of the doubt of, is this the right one for me? Let's see if I can get that connection. But we have to be open with what we're going through. If we're not and we hold back, we're never going to get the help that we need. Getting the help that we need is everything. It, being open, though, is everything because there's nothing that tells anyone what we're going through other than us. Same when it comes to our family. Same when it comes to, you know, why I'm self-harming or, or why, you know, I'm struggling maybe with, you know, my my depression. Why you're calling me lazy or the things that you're doing that that hurt. I mean, Another great way to set up healthy boundaries is even through letters or through that communication of letting somebody know, hey, these are what my boundaries are. Or, hey, this this offended me or hurt me. Uh, will you please stop? Uh, giving people that communication is everything because the people that really want to be in our life are going to respect that. They're going to open up the communication with us. They're going to talk to us about it and they're going to see what they can do to help us. That uh, It's everything to have that clarity, not the kind of. And share, be be an open book. And, and even if it just turns into kind of a list of what you're going through, that's fine. But it's something to start getting across what you're feeling inside because no one can read our mind. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we forget that 
even though we're depressed, that people, they, they know we're depressed or they think we're depressed or they ask us how we're doing and we always respond back with, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm good. And we wear that fake fucking smile and pretend that everything's okay. And we end up struggling and suffering more than what we need to. Being as open as possible, is it is it vulnerable or are you, are you putting yourself out there? You are. But one of the things I found for me when I wrote that letter is it also empowered me. It empowered me already over what I was starting to feel and what I was feeling so that I even felt better about it. I kind of owned it more because I got it out on paper and then I felt even better handing it to somebody. You're not always going to get the response that you want. So don't set yourself up with, with false expectations that, okay, I wrote him a letter now and now everything's going to be fine. No. That, that's the first step. And some people may even take the letter and toss it away. That's okay. But it also lets you know who's important in your life and who's not. And maybe who you have to cut out and, and who to keep in your life. But it starts that communication of letting somebody know, hey, this is what I'm struggling with. I'm struggling with anxiety. I, I'm, I'm having a massive fear of judgment. I feel like I'm failing. Here's why I feel like I'm failing. The more detailed you can get, the more it helps people understand. The more information you get into somebody's hand about what you're going through, the more they can understand what you're going through and possibly try to help. I mean, it, just even having that support or somebody there that's willing to listen makes a difference in our life because we feel alone. We feel isolated. We feel that nobody does understand. And some of it's our fault. And we, we have to take responsibility of that. And it's not easy to do, especially when we're already depressed because we're beating the fuck out of ourselves. We already feel that we're to blame for everything, that we're a burden, that we're damaged, that we're invisible, that we're broken. And we're not. And it's baby steps. It's a small victories. I mean, every letter that you write to somebody, count it as a victory. That you're getting closer and closer to finding somebody who's going to be able to understand, somebody who's going to be able to relate. And especially even when it comes to teens and stuff of letting your parents know exactly how much and, and what you're really feeling. Because let's face it, people will tell you, oh, it's a phase. Oh, it's puberty. Oh, that's just part of growing up. Uh, true to a point. That, that's true. But also I can tell you this when I was 14. I mean, I was diagnosed with ADD. So mental illness does start at an earlier age. And if somebody doesn't know that you're struggling, they don't know how to help you or to even where to start getting you help. And now next thing you know, you're just going through it alone. You're going through the motions alone. And it feels more and more isolating. And the longer that you go through it by yourself, the harder it is to open up. So writing a letter, it's not aggressive. It's it's non-confrontational. It's one of those that your, your, your communication is a lot clearer than talking. And hand it to them and walk away. You'd be surprised how many people will actually sit and say, hey, man, I read that. And I didn't realize you were going through this. You know, do you want to talk about it? Or what can I do to help you? And, and when people start asking you what they can do to help, have an answer of what you feel might help you and, and let them know, hey, I'm going through a trial and error right now. I, I need help with this. I don't know what to do. What have you done? Remember, some people will try and fix you. You're not broken. And, and the reason that they're, they're, they're throwing out, well, this is what you need to do is maybe because that's what worked for them. Remember, we're all different. So it's trial and error to find out what works for you. But getting the communication started is the first part. And you're worth that communication. And it's the best tool in the world is just put sitting down, putting a, a paper and, and the pen together and getting those thoughts out. It, it's relieving. It's releasing. It, it's, it's empowering. And next thing you know, you're going to find some of these people that you'll really connect with that will understand. And now you're having this open communication. Now you don't feel alone. And now when you are struggling, you can go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm struggling again. Here's what I'm struggling with. And they're going to be a lot more understanding than feeling that nobody gives a shit. Because there's no other feeling in the world than when you feel that nobody gives a shit and that you don't matter. But if we haven't communicated what we're struggling with, Sometimes people are going to make us feel that way and they don't even understand or know that they are. So remember that. I mean, next time that you're struggling out there, next time that you want to let somebody know that you're hurting and that you need help, write them a letter. Write them a letter and be as open and clear as you can about what you're going through. And you never know. Maybe they'll understand. I mean, it's all trial and error. And it's all different for all of us. I mean, that's why I started everything that I did. Uh, down below in the description boxes, I mean, I have links to all my social medias, the links to the mental health discords that I have. Because that's about peer-to-peer -peer support. And again, it's trial and error sharing our experiences of what we've been through. Because it may work for somebody else or help them along the trial and error for themselves. I even have links down below to things on Amazon that I use for anxiety, such as fidget spinners and fidget cubes. Even have a link below for better help if you want to try online therapy. Getting help is, is key and asking for help is key. Writing them a letter and asking them for help 
That's part of what it is. And you got this. Remember how important you are. You're the most important person in the world. And that's not selfish. That's self-maintenance. You're a BAMF. You're a badass motherfucker. You've made it through 100% of your worst days to make it through two today. So try it. You'd be surprised what will happen. If you haven't clicked that like and subscribe button, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's do this together. It's a we thing. It's us thing. Just knowing that we're not alone and that we can do this. We matter that much. Till the next video, comment below, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's do this.